So, for instance, uh, we typically see sometimes in the food animal clinic, uh, the large animal service in the, in the vet school, we'll get cases of uh, llamas, uh, Oh, pot-bellied pigs is more pests, but also uh, goats and things like this, uh, pygmy goats or dairy goats that are tend to be people who aren't really raising them for intensive agriculture, but maybe they're raising them for fiber, maybe a little bit of offspring, uh, but aren't aware, uh, sadly, uh, of, and again, not a malicious intent or to, to try to be uh, negligent, but they're just not aware. And so, for instance, a situation we had uh, a few weeks ago, uh, saw something in the clinic that came in that an alpaca, a uh, young alpaca, that the owners had gotten in with the consultation and uh, somebody trying to um, uh, give them advice on how to feed it. And of course, as you know, uh, on the internet now, lots of information for free. And uh, the problem is it's not distilled fact from uh, testimonial. Uh, uh, so, unfortunately, this, this uh, poor thing came in, and uh, when we finally submitted, we had different issues, but the animal was down, uh, very uh, grave condition, eventually had to euthanize it. And the sad thing was when we sent it to the diagnostic lab for necropsy and the pathologist report came back, it was uh, uh, just a clear-cut, old-fashioned case of malnutrition and improper nutrition and uh, poor mineral balance. Uh, to the point where the, the bone deposition, the mineral deposition, you know, is essentially osteoporosis in a five-month-old animal. Uh, and again, these people didn't, they meant well, but they got tinkering with this mineral, that mineral, this additive, and uh, who knows where they got some of the information, and uh, much to the demise of the, of the poor animals. So that is, uh, I think as a veterinarian, that's a concern of mine in that it, it takes time. You, you, when we look at... If, if we look at a new generation of uh, people who might want to take a stab at farming or raising some of their own food, uh, I, I myself was raised in a suburban environment. It's been a lot of trial and error with gardening, for instance, things like that, or some of the animals we've had. But it's different. We had a generation of farmers or farm families for years and years where information and just the how-to was passed from uh, father to son and daughter and beyond. Uh, some of the seemingly simple stuff that we take for granted, at least I do as a veterinarian going out to a farm, like well, I don't have to ask some questions on how are you watering or feeding your animals usually. Uh, when we have people who, again, uh, I, I realize a lot of these people who want to get into this are not stupid. They may be ignorant. There's a difference, you know, being uneducated. Uh, they are coming from a background where they may have not had anybody farming, if ever, in their ancestry for two or three generations. And, they, and we now have this disconnect between what is very basic husbandry and, um, uh, and, and the knowledge of that compared to what their skills up to that set has, has been or what they have learned. So that interface or, or that, uh, or, or how do we integrate these skills? Again, we almost have to retrain a, a whole new generation of farmers if, if we're going to go this route uh, compared to what we've taken for granted at least I have with what I call quote-unquote professional farmers in agriculture.